Hello, my name's Jenna Reid and I'm a physiotherapist and I work as part of the Edinburgh Haemophilia team with children and teenagers with haemophilia. The team and I have put together this short film to explain the reasons why staying fit and physically active are beneficial and an essential part of managing your haemophilia. The film will provide general information on physical activity. Therefore, it is essential that you speak to your own haemophilia team before changing the management of your haemophilia or taking up any new physical activities. There's lots of research out there demonstrating the benefits of staying fit and physically active on long-term health conditions in the general population. And with the right preparation, advice and support, there's no reason why you can't also stay fit and active and adopt some of those healthy lifestyles. Your doctor, nurse specialist and physiotherapist work as a team to help you manage your haemophilia. You'll hear more advice from the team later about the benefits of exercise and how to do it safely. First though, we'll hear from Sean, a young man with haemophilia, about the sports and physical activity he enjoys and how this helps manage his condition. So I have mild haemophilia A and I was diagnosed at two. And as I grew up, I mean, I had many joint bleeds and muscle bleeds, but they weren't a massive factor in my life. It only took a week or two to recover. But when I was 14, I developed an inhibitor, which made the management of the condition a lot more difficult. And yeah, so I've always played football. Football's been my main sport since I was four years old. I've always played football. And like I say, I used to get injuries maybe I don't know, every couple of months or something, and it wouldn't be a big deal. I'd be on crutches for maybe a week or two, but as it went on and the, the injury started to get worse, I mean, it got a lot more difficult, but I continued to play football right through until I was 14, and then, like, I mean, I got a bit of time where I was out and it, it made things a bit, a bit more difficult, but I continue just to be, to be active and proactive and keeping myself fit and healthy. I mean, I think that's quite important for the management of my condition. I think if you're starting out exercise for the first time, try and find something you enjoy. It doesn't necessarily just have to be a exercise, even just playing a game or something, just something that you enjoy and something you can incorporate a bit of exercise with and with your friends especially. I think the, the thing about sport is the kind of companionship and making friends and that, that's kind of the main aspect of it. In the long run, which would help you know, prevent bleeds in the future and help keep your muscles and joints healthy. No one wants bleeds, so I think if you can get into a sport, enjoy yourself and prevent bleeds, I think that's great. Well, I think the, the haemophilia team can help you pick an activity that you enjoy and one that's safe. Because, I mean, there are sports that are difficult and probably you can't do with haemophilia and you just have to, you have to get over that. But there's so many options to you that if you can come to an agreement with your haemophilia team and manage your condition while you're doing that sport, no, there's not a problem with that, I don't think. I think that everyone's happy. So I think when you are exercising, the most important thing is warming up and then cooling down after. But the, the warm-up is difficult because I know when I was playing football, a lot of the youngsters didn't warm up. It wasn't really the done thing, but if you watch any professional sport, they all warm up. Then they're all really, it's really important, fundamental to them to warm up and you'll see their coaches making sure they do that. And I think that making sure you stretch and warm up the muscles is fundamental. It's going to prevent an injury. The bleed that I had when I was 14 um, was a muscular bleed and it was in my hip. And at the time I never quite realised how detrimental those bleeds can be. And um, I th the haematoma forming and they were kind of struggling to, to resolve it. Um, there kind of was many different options that they took and one of those was in the future, if these bleeds were to occur, that I would treat myself. So that was another factor in the whole kind of, what's going on, I don't understand this, this is really strange and it's all new to me. Then I had to go and learn how to treat myself at the age of 14. So after the bleeds that I had, then obviously the, my muscles were a lot weaker and there was things that I needed to work on myself to, to improve my condition. So when I went to see the physio maybe once, twice a week, they would obviously do things with me to improve like the, the movement in my joints and the strength that I had and then I would be sent home with home exercises and don't get me wrong these home exercises they are difficult to do sometimes but I did them and I stuck by them and I, religiously and that was I think the fundamental factor in getting me back to where I wanted to be and getting my strength back and my muscles and going back to football essentially I think that if you can do them like they're, they're there for a reason and they can help they, and they do help.
felt like I was in control of my condition and I decided what happened rather than that had control over me. To hear another perspective, I also spoke to Hazel, who's a mum of a teenage boy with haemophilia. This is what she had to say. When my son was first diagnosed with haemophilia, um, I felt that although it would have its ups and downs, that, that in my heart I knew I would cope with it. I was advised to allow him to be a, just a little boy and allow him to do things that little boys do. He was a, allowed to do any activities that he wanted apart from um, contact sports, which was like your rugby. I encouraged him to stay physically active because it's fun, it gets him involved with other children, so it's a sociable thing, and it also keeps him fit and healthy. The thing that helped my family um, approach any physical activity was the help from and advice that I received from the multidisciplinary team who would advise you on any protective clothing. It could be used for any of the sports that you wanted to do. The advice would always be allow him to try it, ensure that he enjoys it, but if we were to get recurrent injury, then maybe we would have to relook at that activity and see if there was any, in any way that we could prevent the injury or if maybe that wasn't an activity that was suitable for my son at that time. Now, school camp was quite a, a um, process. Um, as soon as I was aware that he wanted to go, I made contact with the school. I wrote out a traffic light scenario of how each injury would, what it would come under, whether it was an emergency 999 or whether it was just a, a plaster and a clean up. Uh, I wrote down whether, each, with it, each one, whether it needed treatment and, or um, medication, if it needed a phone call home. Um, I also contacted the centre I think communication with people is very important. Something that I felt important was the member of staff seeing my son administer his own treatment and in the event that he needed a second pair of hands, they would be able to help with that situation. The best piece of advice I could give any family is to allow their child to grow up the same as every other child, to um, always be aware of different situations in their lives and to take the best precautions and advice from the multidisciplinary team. The other members of the team will now describe the benefits of staying fit and physically active in more detail and they'll share with you their experiences of haemophilia and physical activity. First of all, we'll hear from Angela, who is a haemophilia doctor. Angela will explain the importance of exercise to keep you fit and healthy. I've been working in Edinburgh at the Haemophilia Centre for about 22 years. I was at a meeting and went to a talk which was quite inspirational by a physiotherapist and realised how much really that that specialty can give to children with haemophilia and help me actually as a consultant look after them. So the service began very rudimentary I suppose quite some time ago and has gradually built up and it's made me realise how important it is for children to be active. Um, it's important for many reasons with haemophilia. Um, the children need to be strong, they need to be able to understand uh, how to interact with their friends um, in terms of sports and activities. They need to build strong muscles and good balance. The problem is, of course, is when they're first diagnosed with haemophilia, their parents are concerned that they may injure themselves or damage themselves, bruise, have bleeds into joints, and therefore very protective of them. As they become a little bit older, they need to then want to participate with their friends in their sports. And if you can have uh, somebody to help with a real expertise in showing uh, the children and young people how to uh, be, be strong and exercise and make sure that they're warm up properly before any uh, sport that they do, that can be really important in preventing muscle bleeds. Uh, children themselves, if they uh, involve themselves in sport also, um, are very much like their peers. They can join in um, and actually can feel quite good about themselves being active. From a haemophilia point of view, so long as uh, 
there is advice on how to warm up and stretch your muscles and so on, and what sports are appropriate, again, it can be really important in terms of um, strengthening muscles, uh, generally being in good condition, and actually being able to protect those joints uh, as uh, you grow into uh, young people and then leave actually the children's part of the service and go into the adult part of the service. Now we'll hear from Irma, who's a haemophilia nurse specialist. Your nurse can offer advice about what you need to do to help you enjoy physical activity safely. It's important to think about planning for anyone when you're going to take part in a new sport. Think about if it's something that you enjoy doing and if you plan in advance, speak to the appropriate people, think about what you're going to do and it's a safe and appropriate sport for you you're much more likely to enjoy that sport and less likely to have problems associated with that. The physiotherapist in your local haemophilia centre is the best person to speak to when you to help you establish a fitness programme, to take into account if you have any pre-existing problems, for example, any joints that you've had repeated bleeds into, and you may have heard this called a target joint. Be aware of this. This doesn't necessarily prevent you taking part in any sport, but again, really important to speak to your physiotherapist and your haemophilia doctor to give, make sure that they give you the appropriate exercises to do. And there may be occasion where they may say that this isn't an appropriate exercise for you, but they'll always then be able to give you advice about something that you can do instead. There's no one correct answer about when to take your prophylaxis. It's different for everybody. Just be aware that you time your prophylaxis so when you're going to be taking part in sport, be that physical education at school or taking part in sporting activities outside of school. Remember to always take part in a sport that suits your flexibility and your fitness level. It's always best to take part in sports that are organised and supervised. Remember to wear correct, the correct protective equipment. It's important to remember whenever you're taking part in any sporting activity that a bleeding episode can occur. If this happens, it's important to stop the physical activity immediately and to take treatment or to seek advice if you're not on home treatment or you need some extra advice about what you should be doing. As well as taking appropriate factor treatment, remember the principles of price. Protection, rest, ice, compression and elevation. Physical activity helps build strong muscles which in turn support your joints and this may in turn reduce your risk of bleeding. The right type of physical activity at the right intensity may also help you recover following a joint bleed. However, this is general advice and it is important to seek advice from your own haemophilia centre who know you and your body best. Hopefully this short film has made you realise some of the physical, social and emotional benefits of staying physically active. In summary, physical activity is good for everybody, including people with haemophilia.